Welcome to another broadcast of The Soul of the Everyman on the Artist First Radio Network. All past shows are available in podcast form. Find them at artistfirst.com. We welcome your questions and comments. Hit us up at DJ at artistfirst.com. And now here they are, Michael and Margaret Lines. <laughs> and thank you very much, D-Man. And it is Michael and Margaret. Margaret Lyons. And, and, and welcome to the Soul of the Everyman, where the points are starting to count again. It's now, <laughs> it's, now it's August. and got to start counting the points. Uh, summer is over, people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the, the cicadas were up in the trees the other day. They were jamming out. Mm. That's a sad thought. It is. It's a sad thought. Every every time those damn cicadas, I mean, those wonderfully blessed cicadas come out, we know that it's the end of summer. But, um, you know, this year has been an odd year, and maybe it's a good thing. Gotta, gotta, gotta draw another chapter closed here, and 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 tonight, tonight, let's get back to uh, to our subject tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about something, and I don't know that we've ever uh, discussed directly before on the Soul of the Underground, but it it came up. Um, we 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 do occasionally we draw inspiration from all points, and we occasionally get um, an interesting post that'll pop up on a social media site, and I believe one of your relatives. Posted yeah, something, cousin. Um, your cousin uh, posted cousin. Uh, something on, on her um, social media site, and uh, it struck us as being interesting. And it was about intimacy, or rather, it was about the confusion that many people have about what intimacy is. And I think the way it's captured in that particular post is that you know most people think about intimacy as physical intimacy as sex or as as being able to be close to someone hugging whatever as an intimate sort of thing and in, in these days of contagion um i think that that's a reasonable thing you you want to limit your intimacy even to the point of not you know uh, having a friendly um contact w- amongst people that you know well or even people that you don't know well but um, the the post goes on to explain that that true intimacy is is far beyond the physical. Uh, true intimacy has to do, um, at least in this case, they talk about it being, um, you know, a a, uh, a the ability to share your My- truth with another. But but I think we abstracted that, and really what we said is that true intimacy is about trust more than anything else. It's who you trust with your truth. Well, do you want to read it? I think you should do that because I screw it up a lot. Hmm. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, people think that intimacy is about sex. But intimacy is about truth. When you realize you can tell someone your truth, when you can show yourself to them, when you can stand in front of them there, and their response is, you are safe with me. That's intimacy. And I, and I think that's that's true. Um, but... And I think the abstraction is still valid. I think it's a little, if you go just one step deeper, intimacy is about um, who you are, who you trust to reveal yourself to and who has earned that trust. Right. Uh, And relationships, which are solid relationships, are built on top of intimacy or or really the the, the two go hand in hand. Um, as a relationship deepens, it becomes more <clears throat> intimate on all levels. But truth is important, but I think it, it goes beyond truth. It goes down to even the lies or or the innermost thoughts, because the person that you are most intimate with on the planet, if you think about it for a second, is yourself. 
no one knows you better than you know you. And if you were a singularly complete person who had no one who had no need for anyone else, and this would be exempting everyone in on the planet, but if you were, you could say, "Well, I am, <clears throat> I am an island." <laughs> but as we as we know, the, the famous phrase is, "No man is an island," because we need relationship and we need intimacy and we need to share ourselves with with others. But there's risk. Um, there's tremendous risk, and and we feel it. You know, when you when you start to um, approach another, you calculate almost immediately before you even open your mouth what you should how you should interact with them and and we have a lot of social mores that are built on top of you know the protocols for meeting someone who's a stranger or an acquaintance or a relative and so on and on and on and these things are are really levels and and sort of envelopes of intimacy and of and sort of envelopes of trust and as you go from a stranger or an acquaintance to something deeper or more intimate, you um, and the other reveal more and more of themselves, of the true self, the self that you know, your internal self to the other. And each step along the way, Margaret, I think there's always opportunities for deepening trust or backing away. When, when you, when you, tell someone something that you feel is is important and they react in a way that just doesn't jive it makes you pull back you know oh well maybe maybe i i i over trusted we have that wonderful saying over sharing you know mm. yeah uh i think the first part of what you brought up was true is that if you truly know yourself and I mean know yourself, it's not what you, just thinking this or wearing that or my favorite color is. That's all a, a very surface level that you show to the outward world. But you truly know your internal. You value yourself. You accept yourself because you know what your strong points and your weak points are. At that point, you decide whether or not you want to share any of it with another person. If you value yourself, you're very careful about mm. that. Because uh, when I say value, you know how unique you actually are. And some people would say, well, you know, they would put some sort of gradation on that if it's good or bad, but it has nothing to do with it has to do with whether or not you acknowledge the life spark inside of you and what that brings. And then your incarnation down here, what your, your physical um, capabilities and attributes blend in with your spirit soul and how unique that combination is in every single person, but to especially acknowledge it within yourself. It is quite valuable and, and quite lovely for that uniqueness. So when you realize that, you really do want to be able to interact with the outside world to share so that you can bounce experiences and ideas off another person. When you do that, it creates a perspective. You know, it's suddenly not only about you, but about your relationship to another person as well as the world around you. This is how we learn. So it is very important to find out where the person that you are intimate with is perceptive and sensitive enough to see what you've seen as well as maybe they can point out a few things that you haven't seen. 
Yes. And, and I think th- that journey starts almost immediately. In other words, um, when you, when you put children together, um, even young, even very, very young children, they immediately start to, um, express themselves one to the other. And then there's, uh, a certain level of familiarity, let's say, that, that initially grows between them. You know, um, I like this toy. You like that toy. If there's an interaction with a particular game or toy, or even just a communication going back and forth, there's a there's an ex- there's an expression of who you are, and there's a an acceptance of the other, and back and forth. I think it, at some level it begins to be a, the journey of self-discovery through, you know, internal reflection, which is what you talked a lot about it, there, as well as as you know, beginning this process of sharing something that you that is unique about you, because I think that the the idea that you express that the realization, the self-realization, comes later in a in a human's development. Initially, we are so innocent that our awareness is not self-awareness. It is just presence. And and I think we layer on this idea of self-awareness as we get a little bit more mature. And then there's this self-consciousness, which gets kind of conflated. And, and people get, they start to internally judge themselves, not as, as precious, but as somehow, well, why am I not like this one? Maybe they won't like me kind of, you know, judgments. That whole process, um, it, it thwarts our initial really pure expression of self. And it also gets in the way of, of the intimacy that you have as, as I- I- initial presence intimacy. The child, the innocent child, is, is, is aware without being aware, is sharing itself um, without barriers. You know, when you look at an infant, you see them and they see you. And, and there's such this wonderful, I, no words, no need for any kind of, I'm, uh, you know, I have this title or that title or this possession or that possession. It's just, here I am. And, 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 and you, you immediately react to that with, wow, you know, we're, we're being individuals. We're talking to each other at a level which is far beyond. It's the pure, um, soul meeting with an with a with an infant eye to eye there's, that gets all cl- yes yeah no there's no words no words there's no need no, there's no words you don't need to although I, I you see it all the time that people immediately want to start talking at the baby uh and the baby's looking at them wondering what in the world is going on over there and it's like oh aren't you interesting your lips keep boofing hmm <laughs> And, but if you, and I know you do this a lot with the kids, you just give them, you know, a turn of the head and a look in the eye and there's a smile and you smile and um, there's an immediate communication there that, that is wordless and, and beautiful. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, we grow older, we become self-aware, we become self-conscious. We, um, because of, of, uh, of who we are as human beings, we, we crave the intimacy that we had before, but we also understand that there may be not the reaction we're looking for. Maybe someone doesn't like us. Maybe someone is going to judge us. And so we begin to be wary and cautious. And that's not a bad thing because the world is not full of, not everything in the world is good. But it goes to extremes. People become very introverted. They become um, very reactive and 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 afraid uh, to share themselves, or or even just this sort of natural, um, you know, curiosity about the other, uh, how they see you. You know, it's this idea of how am I reflected in the other? How how do I reflect the other back? And you've said this many times. Uh, that many times relationships are really looking for yourself and the other. You're looking for a mirror. And and these aren't necessarily the strongest of relationships, but they are common. Uh, you know, 
we often look for an echo of ourselves or what we think we are, which is even more abstract, an echo of what we think we are and an echo of what we think we want. So then the ego is getting involved, you know, and yeah, spinning have, things. Yeah, the ego filter. <laughs> it's uh, opposed to your presence of being there and being with another. Um, and you can have communication without words. In fact, those are the most interesting, I'd say. Because you find a myriad of ways to communicate concepts or feelings. And it's very interesting because some people would say, well, you can't do that. You need a word to be able to communicate what you're thinking. And as a human being, you're more than what you think. It's an interesting exercise, actually. Have you ever tried to communicate to someone a concept without words? What what do you do? And I've had people tell me, how can you say anything? And it's fascinating, but it is it is more than possible because that's when that's when the artistic side of you begins to open mm. because it's got to find another way, and usually it's the most creative way begins to express itself in you to communicate to the other what the concept is marvelous, marvelous experience interesting what you touch on there because the artistic or the creative um, expression of self is also fraught with intimacy you know mm-hmm. a true true art is an expression or rather it's a um, a vehicle for intimacy and when you you know when art affects you at a level below uh, words and at a, at a at a heart level let's call it um, you feel a connection to someone who is not present. You, you feel a soul connection to someone who may be long dead um, because you reach a point which, is, which doesn't require, first of all, it's trans time. It's trans space. It doesn't require physical presence. And we were talking here again, people talk about intimacy being, you know, physical intimacy is what people think about. But, but the intimacy of a concept which is below words or beyond words, uh, it crosses the barriers of space and time. And it also uh, evokes a feeling of, of knowledge of the other, of, of understanding, of, of um, simpatico, you know, that that you, you feel you know this. Now, I'll just use a personal example. We wrote the book. We wrote Christopher's story and uh, published it in 2015. And over the last, you know, many years now, five or six years, we've had people contact us over those years and say they feel like they know us. Now, they don't know us, but the, 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 power of art of expression <clears throat> is that it it engenders intimacy without any physical presence or really without ever having talked or interacted with this person you put something living into your art which evokes a a living response in in another and then there's there's always this idea of of wrapping around, you want to kind of tell or somehow find a way to show that this is an intimate connection. Uh, It has changed you. It has changed you at a level that you wish to um, share this change. And I believe you've touched on a very foundational concept that intimacy True intimacy changes you at a heart level. 
and it reflects out and shows itself throughout the rest of your life. Which and, is, yes, go ahead. Yeah, and, and that's the reason why we yearn for it. Hmm. Every human being yearns to be intimate with another soul. I, I would even go so far as to say that we require it. That, that, intim- that here, the streaming of the common dream in this space is an exercise in intimacy True. at, at True. all levels and, and for development, for our own personal change of heart, uh, intimacy is required. So, so this is the risk and the reward of intimacy. The intimacy is the opening of the heart, risking um, damage or pain, Pain, rejection. Yet, yet required for growth of the heart. Because, again, you said it earlier, you know, if you knew yourself so intimately that you needed nothing else, you would be a perfect being. And we aren't. We are not perfect beings. We are here to dream the common dream. We, the currency of development or the, <clears throat> the price you pay is intimacy or the risk of pain And the reward of change, which can sometimes be conflated very closely, change change and pain uh, happen a lot together. But we need it like we need food or we need water. You need intimacy because without it, you feel less than a person. You feel um, intimately, you feel viscerally wounded without intimacy. Right. And... It's also acknowledging the fact that you, your truth, and each one of us touches into that truth. Your truth needs expression in this world. Who you, you are at a core level needs expression in this world. And the way to do that is through an intimate relationship. With another. With another. Uh, it, requ- it is required, and it, it, it's, it's more than a need. It's, it's a need at the level of air and water and food. You will wither. Your, your soul will be damaged by the denial of intimacy or by, the, um, you know, by not experiencing intimacy. And I think what happens, I believe, that without that, connection, the amount of pain that arises from that isolation, Mm. Uh, your response is, I have to do something about it. And if you don't think you can, you try to numb it in some way just to get away from the pain. Mm. But the truth is, there is a, a truth within you that is so precious. Don't believe the lies that anyone else may tell you that you're not that you are worthless. Mm. You are not. You are not. Your soul is precious. Your life is precious. Two two wonderful points there. The first, you know, what's the opposite of intimacy is loneliness, and the pain of loneliness. People describe it as one of the most excruciating pains. You know, isolation. We. I mentioned before, we come here to dream the common dream, but we we come here because this is the only place where we can be intimate at this level. Right. And without it, you you know, the loneliness leads to death at the end, whether it's a death of physical death or a death of spirit, which is in some ways worse, a damage to the spirit. Well, a damage to the soul. Yes, yeah. not yeah. spirit, soul. And and the precious uniqueness of incarnation, the precious uniqueness of the soul, um, requires intimacy in the same way that the precious uniqueness of the body requires food and requires um, the the physical needs. Um, the the so this this is this is far beyond what 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 is postulated here. Yes. Intimacy can be physical. Intimacy often is physical. But 
the physical is a reflection and a poor one of true intimacy. Um, or it, it, I shouldn't say poor. It, it is, it's a component of intimacy, yet you can feel the greatest intimate connection with someone who you can no longer be physical with, um, yet the intimacy doesn't um, fade. You know, your the change which you go through is um, permanent. Once you have once you have become intimate with someone, again, a personal example, you and I have shared a life together which has changed us in many, many, many ways. No one else really can understand the things that we can understand amongst each other because they weren't there. And even if they were there, they weren't at the level of heart that we were at. You know, through a trial, and every one of us has trials, there is an intimacy to the struggle. You know, um, somebody once said, I think it was one of the Civil War historians, that, um, you know, we've gone through the intimacy of war um, because fighting a battle brings two separate souls together in a common struggle for many things, for survival. And that changes you. You cannot um, go back. It, it, you can't uncook the egg. You've been changed. And those who were at the intimate level with you at the same time, going through the same struggle from their point of view, um, understand that because that intimate connection has changed both in such a way that, that there is a a permanent, irreducible connection and a reference point that you can't explain. You can't say to somebody, this is what we did, and, and this is how it affected us. And you can go through every word that you've got in your, in your vocabulary, and somebody will say, oh, yeah, that, that sounds terrible. Oh, yeah, that was... But they're never there. They never can be... Can, this cannot take the substitute of the events, nor the immediacy, nor the intimacy of the, of the actual connection. Yet, people will say to you that they understand what you went through. But it's a different understanding. Yeah. People... Um... Going through trials is always a door opener mm. because you you run right into your limitations when you're in the midst of trial. You know what you can't do, and you know what you can do. But are you willing to admit that there is a lot that you can't do? That and and, and who you admitted to. Well, that is what you look for, is someone to work this through with. And that begins the process of allowing intimacy to change you. And, you know, let's change to a commercial break. And on the other side of the break, we will talk a little bit more about intimacy and, and how it affects us all. The Fat Man Gets Out of Bed is the latest book from Michael Lines, the award-winning author of There is a Reaper. 
Featuring 13 original stories, this wide-ranging collection has everything. Forbidden love, gods versus demigods, weird invading aliens, sexy seductive artificial intelligence, and unusual passion between the living and the dead. All set amidst fantastic worlds of pain and loss and boundless joy. From the sublime to the macabre to the bittersweet, the fat man gets out of bed will leave you breathless with laughter, brimming with tears, trembling with suspense. Available now on Amazon.com, Google Play, iTunes, Kobo, and fine e-tailers everywhere. The wait is over. First Blood, book two of the Blood series is out. Your favorite bad boy thief, Dev, is back. And the beautiful and deadly Trey is right there with him. She is sharp, sexy, and full of surprises. Their adventures continue as a new power arises to threaten the world. The heart of creation is under attack, and time is definitely not on their side, as they battle against their enemies' undead hordes. Can they unlock the hidden power that can defeat him, or will his forces draw first blood? Get all three installments in the series. Book Zero, It's in the Blood. Book One, Destroyer's Blood, and the new release, Book Two, First Blood, today. Available in ebook and paperback format on Amazon, Kobo, Apple, and most other fine e tailers. The Timeless Esoterica Radio Program with Dr. Bruce is broadcast on the fourth Monday of every month at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern on ArtistFirst.com. We explore topics including the paranormal, alien life, mysteries, conspiracies, hidden history, oddities, and much more. Each show will feature a special guest with exciting and thought-provoking discussion. Always keep an open mind, an open heart, live forever, and remember Dr. Bruce believes in you. Rick Rodan fans, love mythology with plenty of action and humor? Destroyer's Blood is for you. The new fantasy novel by award-winning author Michael Lines is book one of the adventures of Dev Kalian, the Blood series. Follow Dev and his magic sword betrayer as they are suddenly attacked and forced to return to Olympus to fight in a war they want no part in. The world of men and gods is about to be destroyed by Zeus's ancient foe, and only Dev and Trey can stop him. The conflict never stops, and the amazing twist will have you on the edge of your seat. Act now while the ebook is on sale for only 99 cents. Destroyer's Blood is available on Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, Kobo, and fine e-tailers everywhere. And while you're there, get the free prequel. It's in the blood. Available for a limited time. Thanks for joining us on The Soul of the Everyman. Back to your hosts, Michael and Margaret Lines. Thank you very much, Z-Man. And, and we feel intimate with Scott. We, we shared, we shared, <laughs> we, we shared some things like that one show. <laughs> uh, but you see, it's the struggle, right, Scott? It's the struggle. It's the struggle. We do struggle. <laughs> we do struggle. Uh, but but you know you know um, we've been talking tonight about intimacy and and um, I think last half hour we mentioned that. Oftentimes, intimacy is is a risk because you're risking two things. You're risking change. You know, you, you risk you're opening yourself up to um, a a growth in your personality, in your in your heart, and you're also potentially opening yourself up to pain. And I, I know um, we've said this before on the show that. That there are people, and, and you had a good friend who would say that they would they would like change, but they don't want it with pain. And I think your point was always that there there there's really no choice. You're going to change, and there's going to be pain. Uh, right. But you have to you have to balance whether it's worth it. Well, 
I think it all comes back to that phrase of sharing your truth, who you actually are. And when you know who you are, nothing anyone says is going to change you. That's that's really what it's going to come down to. People may uh, criticize you, and you may nod your head and you go, okay. But you know at your core that there is this quality to you. You may interact with the other person, adapt your vocabulary, let's say, to be able to engage in conversation. You don't agree on certain things. It's like today, if you don't agree, we we people get a little reactive. <laughs> well, it, it's it's true, but I think there's another portion to this where you 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 do you you're you're exactly right. You're a unique person. Who you are uh, doesn't change, and and to the extent that you know yourself, you understand that but you are changed through this experience and that's a different kind of change it's it's, it's, it's experience it's good it's yeah. you, what you what i'm saying is that you start from who you are your i am thus mm. to sharing that with another and in that process change happens because you you may have a way of interacting with yourself at different levels but it doesn't work with another person you're trying to communicate with the other person also on different levels so you must learn what actually connects and what doesn't and how to build that connection this intimacy has to do with building that connection so that the truth of who you are and the truth of who the other person is can come through on both ends. And you must have a very broad vocabulary in order to do that. Because the, the, not only the concepts, but the emotions and the levels of, of being in consciousness that you are also get communicated in an intimate relationship. And unless that is established in your communication levels, whether it be words or energy or levels or con- the concepts being communicated by ideas or images, you have to establish that. And that takes work. And, and, and to, go, to go back to the earlier, I think that as you internalize those things, you bring them within your heart and your heart expands and grows, there's, there's a certain degree of pain. I think that, there's, that no change happens, no growth, even the best and most, and most positive change requires some outlay of your own internal personal energy and and the fact that you spend your energy on one thing versus another is a sacrifice you sacrifice the thing that you could have done to the thing that you are doing and and it's an intentional thing it, again these mm-hmm. are often again change is is intimacy is accepted as well as offered you can offer intimacy but you don't get it without acceptance. Uh, so intimacy is never a one-way street. You can't say, I'm going to be intimate with you whether you like it or not. <laughs> that sounds oh creepy. My. But, but the point being is that, that, that intimacy, true intimacy, requires both the risk of offering and the risk of accepting. Correct. Uh, accepting intimacy from another is scary. It's why people get all crazy about it. Um, the, even the intimacy of, of a shared idea requires some growth. And when you reject it, you get this sort of craziness that you see. The, 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 the intimacy of, of expression, of thought, 
of idea, of motion, and the physical, of course, all those things require both an offering and an acceptance. The, the, the best relationships integrate all of these things or encompass all of these things. Um, the, the relationships which eschew one thing for another can be very intimate, but they're also limiting, you know. Um, and to the extent that, that you have, you know, we as people, uh, we just we say intimacy, but, we, but really what it is is that we have an, in a spectrum of intimacy with every person that you meet, with every person and with every idea and concept and artwork and whatever, there's a spectrum of intimacy. You, you have to accept that person at a, at a particular level. It isn't static. I'm not, I don't mean to say that it's static. Intimacy is, in fact, the most dynamic thing, perhaps, in human experience because it changes on, on a constant basis. And, and events, external, uh, un, unforeseen, obviously, events, have, an, have a direct in, impact on intimacy. If you are... <laughs> You know, if you are stuck in an elevator with a bunch of people, you become intimate with them because it's a shared experience. And you can go years later and say, oh, remember that time when? And, and there's a certain level of, uh, we call it camaraderie or, or intimacy. There's, you have gone through something with someone else and perforce it changes your relationship. It, it can change it both good and bad. And, and we also, Margaret, we all know people whose intimacy with another has changed, you know, where they become less, where they fall out of love or fall into love or fall out of a relationship. You know, you, it becomes, you're, you were best friends and now you're like, buddy. It, 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 you know, we have all these different words, but they all are expressing the dynamism of intimacy how how fluid it is mhm it is when once you start in a relationship that's your first question is how much are you going to give and how much are you going to receive and if it's going to be a deep relationship that's when you have to expand that connection and it is both giving and receiving. It's got to widen the channel where the flow is back and forth. And how easily that can be done, or do you have to work at it? It's different for many people because we're all quite unique, and we all grow up in different environments, as well as different ways of communication. So every relationship that you have really is unique. It's whether or not you value it enough to take a step towards a level of intimacy. I, I, I want to digress here for a minute because I think there's something interesting here. Um, you know, you, you meet people in your life whom, with whom you feel immediately intimate. And uh, sometimes we describe this as almost having a, um, a prior relationship, a prior life, a prior, somehow we, we understand this particular person um, almost, almost without effort, an effortless in intimacy. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have the bonds necessarily of family or the bonds of, of even, um, uh, you know, some sort of physical relationship or, or, but you just meet, sometimes you'll meet someone literally for the very first time and you feel instantly comfortable with them, instantly intimate. You, you have an almost immediate uh, simpatico resonance. And uh, you, sometimes it's called, you know, love at first sight or, or just, you know, you, you, you meet someone, the two of you are thrown together and you, you instantly with every word, it's like, wow, Oh yeah! Oh great! And it just very, very, very quickly turns into a very fast, intimate friendship. And sometimes, you know, 
much different. And so there are friends, and I'm sure we all have them, that when the, you haven't seen them for a very long time, but the minute you get together, it's like you never parted. Exactly. You know, you just pick up where you left off and continue your conversations. But it's something that each person actually has because it's a heart resonance. Mm. Uh, there's a, and we spoke of this previously, of the heart true. Mm-hmm. And when you are in an, a truly intimate relationship, it's heart true. You are sharing your truth mm. to the other person, with the other person, and they share their truth with you. Mm. So there is a resonance that is set up and any heart true resonance or relationship is something that is timeless. Doesn't matter. Timeless. Mm-hmm. And I and I think back to specifically, you know, people that that we've, you know, that I've or you have had relationships with like that. And as you say, many years go by, many trials in between, and and not a lot of. You would say, well, this, these people, are, are you hardly ever talk to them. You never talk to them. You haven't spoken to them in 20 years. But yet, the relationship was never built on a physical intimacy or, or even a... Or update. Or, 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 or yes. updating what's going on at every minute. You didn't, that wasn't the way you operated. Wasn't part of it. Because, in other words, you didn't get to know them like you wear two rocks together in a stream and all of a sudden they fit. It's as though the, the um, piece that, that resonated with them and similarly with you from them was always vibrating like that. And, and that, you know, it's like a quantum connection. It's like spooky connection. It's uh, spooky action. Addition. You were, you, you've been entwined right. at some point. And that's what you say. Well, I feel like I've known you forever. Mm. I, I feel like we, we had a relationship in a prior life because there's, there's, there's that level of, of um, immediate connection. And these are precious relationships. You know, you, you don't fall into too many of them over your life. And, you, and when you do, you feel immediately um, as though you're carried upon the waves. You know, you know that this person, um, you know that this person provides themselves, it provides this I, this area of trust. You're you're safe with me because you can feel it below any words, beyond any experience, you know, physical experience or, or, or close connection. You, you just have it. I accept you as you are. So no matter what has happened to you, good or bad, I still love you. Hmm. Right. It, it, it certainly can be described as, as love. It, it is, uh, but it's, it is, it, it, it isn't the, um, Eros, it's it's the true agape. It's the true, yes. it's the true sort of of uh, uh, timeless soul connection, love, and um, marvelous. It is. It's marvelous, and it's it's so refreshing that these people become your fast friends almost immediately, and uh, as you said. Throughout life, you know, um, one of my friends from a long time ago, we hadn't met, we hadn't talked to each other in a very long time, and and we just reconnected through one of these social media sites, and it was though we had never mm. uh, lost connection. Mm-hmm. And then, and unfortunately, that friend of mine passed away very, mm. uh, very suddenly, and 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 as a and a very young man, I mean, we're the same age, so he was a very young man, <laughs> and. Um, and I felt a, a, a real um, visceral sadness about it. And, you know, I, I had never met his kids, uh, but I t- 
talk to them about my experiences with with their dad, and I felt I felt a a, a connection with it, with people I had never met. I knew and the connection I had had with him it translated out it, it, because of the heart trueness of the connection that you have with this type of relationship. You don't even ever have to meet them again. Yet the relationship is there. So there's there's a it truly is sort of a of a of a um, an entanglement of your soul with another, which goes beyond distance and time, and and I think would last from lifetime to lifetime. I think there's part of this soul entanglement uh, that that translates into spirit that can be then re-expressed in a new soul entanglement in a in in a much later time, because those spirit connections it's that eternity bank. You brought back the entanglement, you put it into spirit, and it can come back again. It's trans time. It's trans time. It's probably trans dimensional too. It's probably why we feel so familiar. Mm. You know, there's a core heart connection that goes past uh, your forms and your individual experience. You do have experiences here, but it is only a vehicle by which you can touch each other and vibe together. I don't know how else to explain it. You Hmm. are in resonance with one another. That resonance just goes on. Yep. And it sings. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, so the, there's these relationships seem to almost be riskless, but it's because the acceptance and the offering of that of that intimacy uh, has taken on its own. Um, it becomes a standing wave. If you know anything about mm-hmm. resonance, there's something called a standing wave. This this means that the energy has, uh, in essence found a way to persist with almost no more input. It is, it is, it is become a self-contained, self, um, uh, self-replicating sort of thing. Perpetuating. It, it's become perpetu- self-perpetuating. That's even better. And, and that resonance is, um, it, it is painless because it is already all, all the, all the initial, um, energy that was required to set it up has been given and received and you just reconnect to it. So we bring along within ourselves many, many of these resonances. You don't know when you're going to find that, um, that connection again, that soul echo again. But when you do, you find it and, and it, 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 it just like, it's like, as you say, no matter how many lifetimes ago, it's like, oh yeah, I know you. Your your form may be different. The circumstances are obviously different. The time and the space and everything else is different. But I know you. Mm-hmm. You know, I know you at a level which we acknowledge effortlessly. We say, oh, yeah, I know you. I know who you are. I, I feel that we know each other. Um, and that, can... that's a... Yeah, no, that that connection is so open mm. and so pure that you you communicate, you talk, you sing, you together, and yeah. it, it is, she said, it, it is perpetual. Ah, there's a thought. <laughs> what if? What if the sound of the Big Bang (laughs) Here we go. (laughs) Yes? Was the original intimacy. I would say that's that's an extremely intimate relationship. Um, And 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 to get back, you know, kind of come back to our our original theme here, 
Um, it is, you know, intimacy can be said to be about truth, but I think it's, it's the truth is the outcome of, of intimacy. I think it's about trust and it's about vulnerability. It's about um, an opening of the heart and, and sometimes an immediate resonance, but sometimes uh, it's about a, a shared trial or a shared experience which then um, changes you. And as you change and the other changes, the resonance grows. It can get very, it can become an eternal resonance, but it doesn't have to, have to start there. It can, it can begin with two hearts which just open and offer and, and look for the opportunity for intimacy. Um, and, and again, and it can very, very quickly say, "Well, no, it doesn't work. It's not working, or it was working, but now it's it changes. It's dynamic. <clears throat> the the certainly the, the the this idea of you're safe with me is an outcome which is very intimate. The safety or the trust or the uh, acceptance is is a is a is a level that we desire. And um, when you find that, you, you hold on to it. If you find someone with whom you feel safe and with whom you can provide safety, uh, there's a, a great basis for, for a relationship and, and certainly a great basis for intimacy. Well, that heart resonance, that trueness, hmm is something that we are. And again, I say it, coming to that trueness with clarity is the prime purpose of what we are here for. Mm. And it's expression of the heart true. And the expression of the heart true needs to be in relationship with others for its true expression. So when you find that there are people that are making you nuts <laughs> and seem to put a stranglehold on your heart, you this is where the lesson lay. It's uncomfortable. Sometimes it's painful. But can you open your heart enough so that you can make space for the life that you see that's annoying you. Yes. There you go. Loving the unlovable. That's mm-hmm. a different kind of intimacy. <laughs> but it is what the heart true is. Yeah. Yes. It's yes. all that journey. It's all intimately connected to the intimacy journey of allowing the heart true to be able to be expressed. And there are many who would take steps in that. But again, it takes courage. Well, and uh, there's a topic for another show, but really, you know, when you t- reach the level of intimacy, which is human to human, and you go beyond, you know, sort of a personal and into a, 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 a more of a, of, a hum- of a spirit intimacy. But you know what? That's a, that's a show for another time. <laughs> and and I, I love being intimate with you. And in this particular in- intimacy, we're going to have to say, I'm Michael Lyons. Ah, uh, and I'm Margaret. Thank you for listening. 